Hi, this is Virtual Flight Test Center. In this episode, let's break down this iconic scene from the movie Top Gun. I'll analyze the aerodynamics of inverted flight and let's see how the Russian bogey could have avoided the embarrassing birdie from Maverick. In the test sortie, I'll fly the Su-25 Frogfoot at 3500 meters above ground level. Initially carry out a normal stall. Thereafter invert the aircraft, try and maintain the attitude of the aircraft and also the altitude. And towards the end we will do the data analysis of uh, the normal stall and the inverted stall. The aircraft wing is nothing but an aerofoil in three dimension. The, there are different types of aerofoils which are um, differentiated based on the type of camber. One is symmetric aerofoil, uh, positively cambered aerofoil and negatively cambered aerofoil. This graph shows how coefficient of lift varies with uh, angle of attack. For a symmetric aerofoil, at 0 degree angle of attack, the coefficient of lift is 0. However, for a positive camber aerofoil, at 0 degree angle of attack, you have some positive coefficient of lift. This graph shows how the lift force varies with angle of attack for a symmetric aerofoil. An aeroplane flying straight and level will fall in the shaded region of this graph whereas you will have a positive angle of attack leading to positive lift force. The aircraft flying inverted will fall in the region shaded red. The angle of attack will be negative and the corresponding lift force will also be negative. In this picture I have traced the chord line of Su-25 Frogfoot. The relative airflow intersects the chord line at an angle and that angle is called as angle of attack. Generally, the positive angle of attack causes a positive lift. To make the difference between upright flight and inverted flight more obvious, I'll be flying with the flaps in partial condition. Observe carefully that a wing along with a partially operated flap is nothing but a positive cambered aerofoil. Now let's break down the components of inverted flight. In an inverted flight, the aircraft is subjected to negative angle of attack. The wings along with the partially operated flap becomes negative camber. So let's suppose that uh, we want to fly an aer aeroplane at IAS of 400 kmph at an altitude of uh, 3500 meters. So let's say to sustain that flight, it requires to maintain an angle of attack of 3 degrees. Just remember, the positively cambered aerofoil during upright flight becomes a negatively cambered aerofoil when you are flying inverted. So obviously, if, if it becomes a negatively uh, cam a cambered aerofoil, the angle of attack requirement increases for the same IAS. This is an interesting screenshot which compares the angle of attack obtained for uh, inverted and upright flight for the same IAS. In the upright flight, the aircraft could sustain 318 kmph at 10 degree angle of attack. However, in order to sustain the same IAS in the inverted flight, we require 3 degree higher that is minus 13 degrees. Shown here is the data plot of how angle of attack varies with uh, IAS. You can see that uh, in case of an inverted flight, there is a consistent requirement to fly at a higher angle of attack than when compared to the upright flight. In this, you can see that the aircraft in upright flight shows all characteristics of uh, positive camber and the aircraft flying in the inverted flight showing the characteristics of 
negative came up okay so coming to the final uh, the, the first query which i had raised in the initial part of the video asking uh, what the bogey that is the the russian aircraft could have done to avoid the embarrassment so all that guy in the russian aircraft could have done is to reduce the speed because if he had reduced speed maverick would have tried to catch up with him and uh, he would have been forced to reduce the speed but there is a limit to which he could have reduced because he is inverted and his angle of attack requirement would be high and eventually he will reach a point where he will not be able to sustain to conclude we can say that the wing does not know whether it is flying upright or inverted inverted flight leads to the negative camber which in turn requires a higher angle of attack to be maintained for the same coefficient of lift in comparison to an upright flight other than the aerodynamic considerations of inverted flight it will be pretty interesting to know what are the engine limitations when we fly inverted that i will cover in my next video thanks for watching